Hello everyone, Golden Razor here, and today I will be showing you how to turn any number pad into a button box for your sim racing experience. I got one here, but this can be applied to all the models you'll see on the internet. This is a relatively cheap alternative to creating an actual button box. Some of them cost you like 10 bucks, 17, 20 bucks. It just depends on what kind of button box you want and how much functions you want in that. This is a really great way to enhance your sim racing experience. Let's move over to the computer. All right, so first things first, what we want to do is order the number pad. So we can go on Amazon, we can go on eBay. It kind of just depends on where you guys want to buy your number pad from. I went on Amazon. I'm going to type in a maximum price of $10 and I search for num numpad and then we'll see what kind of options we have available. You can see that there's a, a good amount of options available. A lot of these are wired, but I would highly recommend getting a wireless one just so that you don't have any extra wires hanging and you can e easily tuck this away. The one I ended up getting has a couple more keys and that's why it's a little more expensive. This one's $17. And the reason I got this one was because it just had more keys that I could work with. The other couple things I would recommend getting, they're not necessary, but you can get them, are some stickers for your number pad. And this is kind of what I have here. I, I really like them. They're, they're good quality. They're nine bucks. It's whatever, you know what I mean. They definitely look good. and. You can see here as well, they'll fit on any number pad you buy. The last thing that I would recommend getting is a phone holder. You might think to yourself, I'm not going to need a phone holder for this. I could just put it on my desk or, or whatever. But what you can do with this is kind of tuck it underneath your desk, right? You can screw this on here or tape it to the bottom of your desk. And then you can do that with 3M strips or you could do that with like Gorilla glue tape. It depends what you guys want to use. And I bought some 3M strips. And I placed one here, and I placed one here, and that way, when I'm pressing on the number pad, like nothing slides, and it's just nicely secured. And I will provide a link in the description for all the products I showed you. You can easily find them there. Let's uh, go ahead to the next step. So after your number pad arrives, if you're like a little kid on Christmas, all we need to do is go ahead and create a uh, Google Docs. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll need to go grab a picture of the number pad. And the bigger we can get it, the better. What I'm going to go ahead and do is open up uh, Snip right here on, on the tool section on your Windows and grab a picture of this. And what this will allow you to do is easily configure your number pad. So I'm just going to name this numpad real quick. And once that's saved, what we want to do is insert a drawing and go ahead and click new and then you're going to click image choose an image to upload and then you're going to click on your number pad so once the number pad is inserted here what we're going to end up doing is inserting text boxes and you can type in anything here for example I'm just going to type in a G just to make sure that this stuff stands out and I'm going to change the color as well just so that stands out as well what we want to do here is copy and paste uh, the required number of keys as many as you have on your number pad. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So once you've finished that, you're going to go ahead, save and close this file, and just minimize it for now. Now move forward to the next step. What we'll do now is we'll plug in the number pad into our computer, make sure that it's properly working. I'm just going to type like number one, two, and three just to make sure that it works. Yep, so that's properly working. And now we're going to go ahead and click the link in the description to download the extra files for the process. So it'll look something like this. What we'll do is go ahead and click download. So now that our files are downloaded, what we'll go ahead and do is just drag and drop this folder onto the desktop, close that out, and open this folder. And what we'll need to do now is create two folders for each program. So we'll just name one Lou and one Hid to make it easy for ourselves. 
and we're just going to drag this one to the loop file and this head one to the head file and we're just going to right click on this and click extract here and we'll do the same thing for the hid macros extract here and then once that is completed what we'll go ahead and do is open up our number pad back up again and what you'll want to do here is double click on your image again and what we're going to go ahead and do is open up hid macros and what this will kind of tell you is the device name of your number pad and it'll tell you the event and this is really important because the event is what we're going to want to type into each of these keys once we click them and we'll see what what it tells us they are so let's see one as you can see here I clicked the one that's keyboard five so I know if I go into devices that keyboard five is going to be my number pad so for one we'll go ahead and type in 49 and then we're just going to we're going to go ahead and fill this whole thing out And if for some reason this comes up and it, when you're pressing um, a key like this, um, that means it's non-programmable, unfortunately. This is the print screen button on in this case. Um, it has event 255 and event 44. So what we'll go ahead and do is just enter 255 and 44 on here so we know which key that is. And no matter what button we press on here, it's going to be the same one. So th these ones what we're going to be considering are non-programmable, so I'm just going to type in non. Alright, so what we want to do now is create another text box and we'll go ahead and color that red and I'm just going to go ahead and type in device, but like we saw earlier anytime we press the keyboard it throws up an event, right? But device is keyboard 5, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is click on devices go to keyboard 5 and what you're going to want to do here is finding out what your device name actually is. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and you're going to go ahead and skip past all this information this HID, VID, MEI, skip that and B8 right after this AND symbol this is where your device name is located. So for example, my device name is 23FBA7D8 and then it ends with that AND symbol. So what we're going to go ahead and do is type that in over here just so we know what the device is called. So that's 23FBA7D8. And that way, this is going to be very useful for when we go ahead and open up the, the next program that we're going to need. And we'll go ahead and open up the button box files, uh, Lou Macros, and open up Lou Macros here. And what we're going to want to do is grab the code that's in the description, and we're just going to copy and paste all that stuff onto here. The next step is to modify the code. So it takes the, the values that you want and the specific device name of your number pad. We're going to go ahead and scroll all the way up and what you'll see here is that it says example device name. But what we ended up finding out was that we already have our device name right here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is type that in here. Make sure that it matches completely. You have all your uppercase and lowercase letters that it came with. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then what we'll do next is insert the event. So what the event is is the key that is being pressed and what you want in return. So for example, in my case, I have typed in here 255 and 44. So it's the print screen button. And what I get in return is going to be the N. And I have that in both cases just because that's how this specific number pad was. And what we're going to go ahead and do is just change these values to the ones that we want. 
So for example, my insert key is 45, and what do I want to return? In my case, I still want the insert key. So I'll go ahead and just type in insert. 36 is my home button, and I still want the home button in return. So I typed in home. 33 is the page up button, so I still want the page up button in return. 46 is the delete key, and I still want the delete key in return. But if you want a better example of what you can do with this, it, the escape key is now a Q, which prevents me from accidentally tabbing away and allows me to program that specific key in game as well. And then 9, I'm going to return with an O. And so anytime I press this button, it's going to press O, and I'll be able to change that in game as well to whatever I, whatever I want. Um, but let's say that your specific keyboard didn't have 35 keys. Let's say it only had this many. What we can go ahead and do is just delete anything that we don't want or don't need that doesn't have your specific event, which is the button. Just delete it. And when you delete part of the code, you want to make sure that you're deleting anything above the end, these two ends. If you don't, the code will break and it won't work, but you can go ahead and easily and just type that back inside. And secondly, if you want to have a specific key, for example, the ones that are, I did not mention within this code, I have provided them in the description. This all has has all the special characters, all these modifiers. If you wanted this P to give you shift plus P, that's all you would have to type is, that's a plus symbol here, and then it'll return you with shift plus. So once you're completed with your code, you're gonna wanna go ahead and save it. And you can save this anywhere. You can save it onto your desktop, just to make sure you know exactly where it is. So I'm just going to name my button box and I'm going to save it. And you're just going to click this little save button up here. And button or box or whatever you guys want to name it. And now we know that it's working. And I'm going to go ahead and click run, which is this play button up here. One thing that is really important is that once we have this code, Anytime you run a game, you want to run it in windowed mode because if you don't run it in windowed mode, the button box won't work. That's just the fact uh, with flu macros. If you don't have anything in windowed mode, it's you're going to have a really difficult time. And we can hop in a game and test this out. And I'll see you guys in the game. So now that we're ready and we got the game running, let's uh, go in our video settings. Just make sure that it's not in full screen. And that's the case. We'll go ahead and uh, mess with the controls. Change these values to whatever you desire. So for example, my ignition uh, is gonna be this key right here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And my starter is this value. And you can see my pit limiter is set to T, but what you see here is that this is actually not the letter T. It's a, it's a totally different number and you want to go ahead and click save in whatever game you're doing so now let's just take it out for a test drive and, and see how it performs go, go, go. The road. let's turn on our ignition and hit the starter works perfectly all right cool all right let's turn on the pit limiter um, we know that it's active we're not getting the error message anymore it's working properly so if we can decrease our traction control. All right, yeah, we can do that. I'm gonna decrease mine to three just because I like it a little lower, uh, my traction cut. I'm gonna uh, change that as well. So traction control cut, I'm gonna change that to three. Uh, my engine map, I'm gonna change that to one. ABS, change that to three. And then my brake bias, I, in this track, especially I like it at 55 but and I like to change it throughout the track as well so that's one really positive thing about this um, 
flashing and flash my lights that works perfectly uh, let's see if our wipers work all right that's working so it just toggles them on and off but I do have one that just uh, changes cycles through them right like that and I can toggle it off just like that uh, this HUD thing it would actually change the HUD in the vehicle I just can't see it because of the point of view that I have um, what else? Alright, so I got the lights. This is cycling through the lights. I can turn them on and off or, or put my highlights on, change the camera if I re really want to do that. Um, lap changes the icon of the track. And th this is all set through ACC, and you can do this with any game uh, you want as well. It just depends on which uh, one you want to play with, you know. You can change this in any game you want. So let's go ahead and just take this out on the track and let's see how uh, how different it is just from low tire pressure. Stay away from curbs. And this, so we'll go ahead and turn off the headliner. All right. Cool. Hello. All right. We'll go ahead and hit the brake. tight turn coming up ahead and this is a really straight turn so I'm going to go ahead and decrease this 55, close to it let's see alright, that worked great it's much more immersive too when you can change these changes on the fly really shows a complete difference and You'll be able to increase your lap times just by increasing and decreasing the, the brake. How bias. This is just way more immersive, and I think it's great how you can just flash your lights at people and get in case they're not uh, moving. You know, you can notify them that way. Let's decrease right here. So we know it's working. And uh, as you can tell, uh, that's way more immersive than. Uh, having to change it, go on the back button, and changing all this stuff on the fly, it's just way easier to do it this way. Um, it's really fun as well, it's way more immersive. I think you guys will, will really enjoy this uh, this button box that you guys made for little to no money, you know. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Golden Razor, peace out.